Hey guys, Target Pop here. This is the Remington Model 8, and this one is chambered in 35 Remington. I think you can see that. Um, I got my little cheat sheet, my little notes over here. Um, all this information is basically coming from uh, the great model8.net. Uh, they got a really great forum over there. I'm a member of it. I don't post very often. Um, I pretty much got these guns, made a few posts, and then kind of left. But um, it's a great source of information for the Model 8s in the 1900 and the Model 81s and such. So uh, if you're looking for more info, go check that out. Um, a little bit about these guns. Uh, the barrel length on them is about 22 inches. There's going to be a lot of information in this. So if you want to skip ahead, skip ahead. I know a lot of people complain about that in my other videos. So whatever. I don't, you know, I do this for fun. So. Well, anyway, yeah, 22 inch barrel, uh, they're long recoil operated. Uh, these originally came in 25, 30, 32, and 35 rem. Uh, the Model 81s also came in uh, 300 Savage. Um, these did feed from a stripper clip. They do have a guide. Now I've seen the original stripper clips for 35 rem go over $100 before on the internet. And then I've seen them in for the, uh, 30, car the uh, 30 cartridge, which is the parent cartridge to the 25, 30, 32. Uh, those go for usually in the uh, like 75 range from what I'm seeing. So they're still out there. They're not prohibitively expensive, but you're probably not going to have more than one or two if you're just your average Joe hunting guy with a, with a Model 8. Uh, now when these first came out, uh, they were called the uh, Remington Auto Loading Rifle and they came out in 1905. In 1911, uh, they changed the name to the Remington Model 8. Um, they made about 80,600 Model 8s. There's 26,000 roughly Remington autoloading rifles. And then uh, when these changed over to the uh, Model 81, they made 55,581. Uh, in Europe, they didn't really sell these over there. They kind of left that uh, to FN, who Browning, the designer of this gun, this action, uh, he worked a lot with FN. They made 4,913s of these guns and they called those FN 1900s. Uh, ba -ba -ba. And then Browning, he worked on these guns, uh, this action and this design in the very late 1890s and was granted a patent for it in uh, 1900. Uh, there's a few different finish options. Um, you would have had the standard, which is what this one would be. I don't have any of the other ones, unfortunately. They're pretty, pretty hard to find. You would have had the special also, the Peer, Peerless, Expert, and Premier. And basically what would happen is the fit finish and the uh, amount of engraving and the detail well increased. So, And then they also made some um, magazine conversions for detachable box magazines. And I've seen three that stick out in my mind. Obviously there's the POE conversion, the Police Officers Equipment Company. They had like a, lo a rock and lock, kind of like an AK style mag almost. Uh, there's the Krieger conversion, which added a little button down here and turned the magazine into, it's more complicated than when I'm making it, turn it into a uh, detachable box. And then there's a couple homebrew designs that I've seen online, which most of them, from what I'm seeing, follow the Krieger style, where they added like a button or latch. Um, when I think when the Model 81 came out, if I remember right, uh, Remington started making the POE style magazines because I think they bought the rights to it. If I remember correctly, please correct me if I am wrong. Thus, this particular rifle isn't 100% correct. The rear sight right there is not the proper sight, but it definitely works very well for this gun. This also has a marbles uh, rear sight on it. These were made in Gladstone, Michigan. Dandy little addition to these rifles. Now, Lyman also made a style like this, and uh, obviously this is the uh, marbles. Now, the front sight on this particular one is also a marble and it is called the S-H-E-A-R-D sheared marble sheared I don't really maybe that's something I don't know about yet but anyway uh, oh yeah okay Frank Hammer used a Model 8 in 35 Remington uh, to kill Bonnie and Clyde they were killed in 1934 which is kind of funny because that's the production date on this particular example um, there's pictures of that happening, not of the actual event happening, but right after, and a lot of people think that, uh, Hammer had a POE converted Model 8. The pictures that I've seen only show this gun, this kind of gun, 
without any conversions done to it at the scene. I'm not saying it wasn't there. I'm just saying I don't know enough about it. But um, if you have pictures of him with a POE converted gun, show them to me. Now, his son or a couple people, like there's a museum, and they have a Model 81 with one of those magazines in it. But the thing is, the 81 didn't come out until, I think, 1936. That was two years after Bonnie and Clyde died. <laughs> so, anywho, flip my cheat sheet over. Yeah, the uh, you're going to see throughout its lifetime, through the production life of the Model 8, uh, there's going to be some little uh, changes through its production life. Uh, these used to have like a scallop of raised wood. Uh, they added a spring uh, to the uh, <coughs> side of the magazine. What I mean by that is these little tabs that are on the sides of your magazine are actually your feed lips. They keep tension on the cartridges inside the magazine. And also you have your follower with its spring down in the actual body. Um, there'd be some little cosmetic differences, but nothing that was noteworthy enough to change the model designation, and for most part, it was just like cosmetic, uh, besides that spring. Uh, now the rest of this is going to be basically just kind of like opinion. When it comes to it being a takedown rifle, I think that them marketing it as such was kind of a silly idea, because it doesn't lend itself to readily being taken down. Um... This is evident in the Model 81, where they kind of deleted the thumb screw, put a beefier stock on it, and just kind of sold it as a normal rifle. Um, so the Model 8, they say it's a takedown gun, but when you take it down, you have to take the forearm off, you have to undo the barrel, and then you have the action of the gun. Now, the bad thing about this is, the action of your gun, the front end here, is completely open to the elements. So if you drop it, if something gets in it, if you have dirt or something in your bag, and you put this in there... Well, you just throw a bunch of dirt and debris into your action. Um, also, the barrel extension will be exposed as well. So if you drop that or get it covered in gunk, well, you're introducing two finely fit surfaces that actually rely on that nice clean surface to move, all of a sudden being uh, caked with crap. So, also, it's not very easy. The Model 1907 Winchester self-loader is a lot easier than the Model 8 to do a takedown on. Now, granted, that's a straight blowback. And this is a locked breech, so be that as it may. Um, oh yeah, the recoil. Uh, people say that the recoil is pretty harsh, and for the most part I agree with that. When you're sitting down on the bench or when you're out just target shooting with your buddies, the, the recoil on these can be a little bit stout, uh, especially if you're doing a full, full load like I do with your reloads, or if you're shooting factory ammunition, it can be a little hefty. If you're out hunting and you're like sighting in on a deer or like the shot of a lifetime, the adrenaline and the excitement's going to be pumping through you, so it's, you're probably not going to really notice the uh, the recoil as much. But it is there. Now the 32 has a significant recoil. I haven't shot the 30 or the 25. Uh, from what I've heard, the 25 and the 30 aren't bad, but um, I've got the 32 and the uh, 35, and there's also a 300. I haven't shot the 300 very much though. Uh, the 300 is not nearly as bad as the uh, 35. Anyway, enough talking. Okay, so first thing I did is lock the rear sight back because I don't want to be bumping it around and knocking it by accident. Uh, the rifle was checked before um, before we uh, started here. So what we're going to do first is remove the forend. Now, this isn't a sling swivel. This is actually your thumb screw right here is where you would mount a sling stud and then also you'd have to probably drill a hole or find some sort of suitable replacement for that uh, rear toe screw on the butt plate. So anyway, I'm going to screw unscrew this and then once that's freed up it is captive in the stock. I'm just going to slide it forward and off. Now these are actually pretty well designed. They're a little thin up towards the end but down through here, I don't know if you can see, they taper downward, so they become pretty thick as it goes down. So they're pretty strong, but be careful with it regardless. They're not easy to replace. Okay, so now we're going to remove the barrel assembly by using the lever. Now I pre-loosened that. These might be pretty stiff, so you're going to break it, and then you're just going to unscrew it. You can see on this one where somebody used channel locks or something to try to loosen it up before me a long time ago. 
But despite being made in 1934, this rifle is in really good shape. And there we go. Next, what we're going to do, turn the safety off, pull back the bolt. Now, that probably should have been the first thing I did, but whatever. This is fine. So we're going to set our barrel assembly to the side. We will come back to this later. We will disassemble this, so don't worry. I'm going to set that right there. All right. There is your receiver and your buttstock. So next, what we're going to do, I'm going to remove this rear tang screw here. It's not a wood screw, as you can see. I'm going to set that aside. And pretty much you're going to just take your palm of your hand and you're going to hit that comb right there. And then it'll, it should free up. Now, depending on how long your stock's been on your rifle, it might be a little bit harder to do. And there we go. Now this hole right here, looks like it has a steel, maybe aluminum uh, pillar in there. That way this screw doesn't aug it out due to recoil. So we're going to set our stock aside. Alright. Now you can actually probably let your bolt forward. Actually what you got to do is hold on just half a second. I got to trick it to make sure it to make it think its barrel is in there still. I can't quite get that to go. So what I'm going to do is temporarily put the barrel right there. And I'll show you why that works so well here in a little bit. I just wanted to take spring tension off of the mainspring. So, you're going to have a little plunger right here. Right there. You're going to take your punch. You're going to line up the pin with the hole. And you're just going to simply push the pin out. Now that's under a considerable amount of spring tension, so you want to be very careful here. Don't let this fly off across the room. Now interestingly enough, this little guy right here, this little guide rod, is made out of wood. It's kind of neat. We're going to take our pin, we're just going to slide it back into there because it's harder to lose this big piece than it is that little pin. We're going to set all that aside. All right. Then we're going to take our receiver, kind of like this. You don't have to use this bag, this is just what I use. I wish I had a smaller hammer though, that's for sure. And to remove your trigger guard, trigger group, and magazine assembly, you have to drive out this pin, and then you have to undo that screw. So, now that punch doesn't quite go all the way through. So I had a little tool that I picked up out of the, out of the cabinet, just an old needle that I broke the tip off of. And then we're just going to all the way through. And there is our pin. It's a pretty long pin. It's got This particular one has a little knurling on the end of it. I don't know if that's something that they did at Remington or if that's from somebody trying to use a pair of pliers to pull that the rest of the way out. I'm going to set that aside. And then we're going to remove the trigger guard, trigger, and magazine assembly. Try to get you back in frame a little bit better. It's kind of hard to do this with the camera right next to you, you know. So next we're going to take this guy out. Pull that dude right out. Bam. Set him aside. And you should be able to separate your receiver from your trigger guard. Now, if you're wondering why these magazines don't drop free, well, as you can see, a big lug on there rests on top. That's why these aren't removable mags. So you're going to take your index finger and your thumb, and you're going to pinch these two ears, and you're going to pull it right out. And the reason we pinch these two ears is because if we don't, they just fall right off. And these are your feed lips. Now, 
earlier guns will only have one of these, the 81s will have two, and these later 8s will have uh, two as well. I can't speak on the FN 1900s, I'm not experienced in those personally. Now, forgive me, I never have taken apart one of these magazines, and to be honest with you, I really don't know a good reason why you would want to take one of these apart. Um, if there's enough interest, I'll look into it. If you guys want me to do a video on just the magazine, let me know. But as of this video, I'm not taking it apart. I will be taking apart the barrel jacket and all that stuff, though, so don't worry. Um, oh, I should also say that I'm probably not going to take apart the trigger guard, uh, trigger group assembly, because... This is one of them. Trigger groups are not complicated. It's just that these are one of those things where you kind of leave them alone unless they need to be worked on. So, provided you do that, you can pretty much get in to anywhere on that trigger to clean it. So, and if you do this, you take out this screw here. This leaf spring will come out. So you can take a toothbrush, uh, Spray oil, whatever you got, get it in there and use a toothbrush to clean it out. This one's clean as a whistle, uh, but yeah, I wouldn't even bother. Push that back down. There we go. So I'm going to leave that alone too. Magazine and trigger group are not getting disassembled. I don't see a reason uh, why you would have to. So, next what we're going to do is be very, very careful. These next parts are a little tricky. So we're going to basically, we're going to take our knob here, our charging knob. I'm going to put it to about right there. And this pin in the center, if you pull up on it like so, you can push it forward and free of the bolt carrier. Now don't sink your bolt carrier all the way back. You don't want to do that. Now we just have to basically, this arm right here, we're going to push it up. I don't know if you guys can see in there very well. There's an arm right here, and it's blocking on this side of the geometry of the bolt carrier. So all we're going to do is we're going to come into here in the front, push up on it, and pull the bolt forward. There we go. And just using a tool, I'm going to push it out the rest of the way. Now this is how I do it. There's probably easier ways to do this, but this is just what I do. So here is your bolt carrier group. We will be taking this apart as well. We will be. Don't worry about that. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take spring tension off of this whole assembly. Now there's a big leaf spring right here. It's a big uh, V spring. It's putting tension on this entire linkage assembly. What we're going to do is we're going to push it down and bring it towards us. Kind of. In there. And now we can pivot it up and remove it. You have to push it down past this nubbin right here and back out and over. Pretty simple. From here, if you're not careful, the rest of your guts will just kind of fall out. So let's kind of be very careful here. Let's set that guy right there. Let's set this guy over here. And then we're going to set this dude, if we can get him out, which we did, down over here. And then we're going to take apart our rear sight. We're going to take our, not take it apart, but we're going to take it off. Now this is a part, uh, obviously you can skip this if you don't have this sight, but it's not a bad idea to take one of these off once in a while and check under it to make sure you got no rust. And we're going to set the screw back over here as well. Now that's how you do the receiver. Now, on this particular example, I've never managed to get the safety off the gun, and I kind of Prescribed to the hole, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, the safety's not broke on this gun. I'm going to leave it alone. But we're going to set that aside. Next, we're going to do the bolt carrier group. Pretty simple little deal. Rotating bolt. Extractor running along the top. Two cam pins. Bolt lock. 
and then the extension that goes into the uh, mainspring housing. So first what we're going to do, we're going to push the pin out that holds your tail and set that aside, the one with its pin. And next what we can do is shake out the cam pins. And they'll come free. There's one cam pin. And then this one just wanted to fall out by itself. These don't try to drive these through because if you try to drive these through, what you're going to end up doing is jamming them in there and possibly bending or breaking your firing pin. These are two pieces that instead of trying to push them through like that, you just pull them out of your bolt carrier. And then what we're going to do is we're going to push down this lever and you're going to pull forward on your bolt and your extractor and they're going to come out as one unit. Now your extractor is marked with the caliber. This one's 35. You probably can't see it because this camera's not very good. So there's that. Next what we can do, don't drive this pin out from the top. This is what holds your bolt latch because this hole isn't drilled all the way through. So what you have to do, take a little tension off that uh, latch and push using your punch and it'll come out. Now you're going to sense a reoccurring theme here. The pin that holds my firing pin in place is stuck and that makes me nervous because firing pins are not very strong. That's kind of like the weak point of any firearms design or of any firearm design and I really don't want to be pounding on this pin on the off chance that I do something wrong and snap it. But, you know, that is what it is. I can't take it apart. You should be able to clean in there, uh, get some Croil, get some Hops 9, whatever you got on hand, and just spray it in there, let it soak for a while, and uh, upturn it and blow it out, and use a very thin punch and piece of cloth and just kind of go around inside. Be very careful because these firing pins appear very delicate. So yeah. So there's your Remington Model 8. Um, the main action of it. We're going to reassemble the action and then we're going to do the barrel assembly, so stay tuned. Okay, so actually what we're going to do is start with the bolt carrier group. We're going to install the extractor part of the way. The extractor is these two little wings that fit into grooves on the top of the bolt carrier. You're going to start them, and then you take your extractor groove which is cut in the top of the bolt. You're just going to kind of line it all up like so. You're just going to push it back in. Now from here, we're going to want to put our bolt latch back in. And this isn't too terribly difficult. We just have to use our eye to line everything up. Once we have it lined up by eye, we can push this guy back in. Oh, come on. I think I got it right there. Come on. Doesn't want to go yet. Hold on. Takes a little bit of doing to get this dude back in. Just got to get it into the light to be able to see down there. There we go. So use the blunt end of our punch. Push that back in place. Oops. But that's okay. We're going to push our latch back in to about right there. And these cams on our bolt, we're going to line them up. And we're going to drop one pin back in, one cam pin back in, and then the other cam pin back in. Now these are not tapered, they're just straight. So there we go. You can push your bolt lock back and test it out real quick if you want. Everything looks like it's in working order. So that's good. Take our tail. Line up the hole. Put the pin for that back into place. And your bolt carrier group, whoops. These pins will fall out, so be very careful. Not sure where all this dog hair came from, geez. 
and set our bolt carrier group to the side. Next, we're going to put the receiver back together. I'm actually going to grab this to kind of hold this back here. All right, that way it kind of eliminates the need for a third hand. I'm going to try to bring you guys a little closer to me over here because this can kind of be a pain in the butt to see. So in here, you'll have a hole and a little notch cut. Now that notch is the home of the spring on your bolt stop, your magazine bolt stop. But what we have to do before that is this notch right here houses your bolt catch, your bolt release. I'm going to put that into place and this is going to be kind of a trick to see but the hole on the end of this piece grabs onto your bolt catch and I got to be able to see it to do it so it might not be the best camera angle here for a second All right. Pin this in place with our finger, and then we're going to drop that guy and put the pin hole. We're going to put the pin into the hole, and then the spring. We're going to hold on to this guy here. Oop, get back into place. Yeah, these are a little finicky, so you got to kind of watch what you're doing. And then we're going to take the spring and we're going to put it back into that little notch. There we go. Now make sure you do that because if you don't, that spring will end up resting on top of this raceway. And the rifle might work, but it won't be as reliable and you'll end up putting a peen in the raceway and you could actually rip that spring out and do some serious damage to it. Push everything back in. Now I didn't take these screws out, I actually forgot, but they're just screws. You just take them out. The long one goes towards the back of the receiver and the short one goes towards the front. So. Next, what we're going to do, this arm right here ensures that the barrel is fully forward. And what that means is when the barrel slides back into battery before the bolt does, it trips this arm, which unlocks the bolt by tripping this piece here and allowing the bolt to fly forward back into battery after it strips around from the magazine. So what we're going to do is we're going to install this guy back. Oops. Don't drop it like I do. I'm going to take this guy here, and we're going to put him on the short pin. Now be very careful because this little leaf spring isn't in there very good on mine, so I don't know about yours. So we're going to slide that back into place. There we are. Next what we're going to do is when you have the receiver inverted like this, this piece will go in like this. With this extension towards the uh, right receiver if you're looking that way. Right wall of the receiver because there's a cutout right there. So we're going to put him, this is going to be a trick, onto the long peg. Now I know it's pretty hard to see guys, forgive me. And there we go. So all your linkage is appropriately lined up. Now I'm going to take you off the tripod, so bear with me here. If you can see in there, that's how that should look. Okay? I'll put you back. Everybody hold on. There you go. Now we're going to take that V spring, and just like this, little tab down, big tab up, we're going to hook it onto this hook or this uh, notch back here, and drop it all the way down. And there we go. Now everything is back together in the receiver, prim and proper. Next what we'll do is we'll take our bolt. And slide it back into place. This is actually a little easier if you remove the spring and insert the bolt first, but we're going to do it this way. Okay, now we've got to help this tail back into the mainspring housing. 
and doesn't want to go back any further, but that's okay. Oh, why are you jammed up in there, pal? Oh, helps if you turn your safety off. There we go. That's actually what it was. So make sure your safety's off while you're doing this. So push everything back into that sidewall to make sure we're all lined up. And from here, we're going to gently lay it down. And take our charging handle. Ooh, our bolt got. Just got to push that bolt back into. There we go. We're going to take our charging handle, guide that back in, and lock that into place. All right. Not too bad. Again, these are super finicky, so forgive me if it's not 100% how you would do it. I'm going to take our wings for our magazine and reinstall them back onto it. And we're going to pinch them between our thumb and index finger again. I'm going to slot this back down. And once you get it started, the uh, trigger guard assembly will hold onto the two ears. Now from here, this tab right here locks into a notch on the front of the receiver, kind of like an AK. So you're going to take this. This is going to be a little snug. And you got to be careful because what can happen is, like right here, your bolt release can fall back a little bit into the receiver. It's not going to come out at this point because you got all that linkages holding onto it. But what you got to do is come back in pull it towards you, and then slot it back into place. And then pushing forward while you're pushing down to line everything back up. And there we go. Now from here you can either put the bolt back in or the pin. I kind of like to do the pin. We're going to squeeze that a little bit more. And take my hammer, just very gently Tap it back into place. I'm going to use this plastic piece here. There we go. Nice and flush. Now we can put this bolt back in. And there we go. From here, we can also put our rear sight back on, if you have one of these sights. And just got to find the hole to get started. Probably best to do that by hand. There we go. Oop, almost. that. And there we go. Now if you take that off, you're going to probably have to re-zero your rifle. We're going to push our bolt fully forward. We're going to reinstall our mainspring assembly. So the metal plunger goes in first. like so. Then we're going to take the pin back out of our wooden plunger. I'm going to push it back down into the mainspring housing. And then we're going to push the pin all the way back through. And there we go. Pretty simple. Grab our butt stock. Slide it back on. Give it a little tap with our palm. There's that. Drop the screw back in. Get this nice and snug. You don't have to gorilla this. Just 
just nice and snug. And there is our action and receiver assembly all put back together. Now again, it's a little finicky. This is not the easiest thing to do in the world, especially when you only have two hands. <laughs> so, Okay, now that we got the uh, action back together, uh, we're going to install the barrel assembly back onto our receiver. And we are going to remove the, um, the ratchet nut and the end cap off the gun to remove the guts from the barrel. Uh, the reason that we put the barrel back into the uh, action is to prevent the barrel from spinning as we're undoing anything. Because if you just had it out, you'd have to hold the barrel extension with one hand and then try to turn off the ratchet piece. Now, I'll give a little warning here. Um, I'm going to do it in a way that's probably not really approved by many guys who collect these guns. There is a specific tool that you're supposed to use that slides over here and then a set screw goes into the hole and then you turn it off. You can turn that nut off the end. And then there's also a spanner which you can use to do uh, this nut down there, the end cap. So that's I'm just giving you a fair warning. This is not something, I've also got pretty strong hands. This isn't something you do if uh, you don't have the confidence. So they're pretty tricky, but here we go. I've pre-loosened mine. So let's see where we go. Hear how it's ratcheted? Oops. And the reason I pre-loosened pre mine is because it was very, very tight. Now, depending on how long yours has been on there, it might have been on there for 100 years, you might have a lot more resistance. Mine was pretty snug. I've had this gun apart before, but it's been a long time. I don't like taking these apart if I don't have to. And I really don't recommend taking them apart because that, you don't want to wear that ratchet out. So, there we are. Now, once we have this off, see all the teeth? These teeth are in nice, nice condition. They're very sharp and pointy. They're in good shape still. So this nut is still very good. <clears throat> You'll see I didn't scratch that up either when I did that. Now we can remove the barrel from the action again. Ooh, I tightened it by accident. There we go. We're going to take him off of there. Kind of awkward. That's why I don't really, I don't. <clears throat> excuse me. I don't think these are good takedown rifles. I think these are just really great semi-automatic rifles. It just feels like the takedown bit was kind of an afterthought by some market guy. All right. We're going to set. <clears throat> excuse me. I got something in my throat. We're going to set the uh, action aside. We're going to set the receiver over here out of the way. Now from here, I'm also going to move you a little bit because that's where I want to stand. From here what we do is withdraw the, bolt, the uh, barrel from the jacket. And here's our barrel. It is keyed. This is obviously a 35. It says so. There's your barrel extension. Don't try to remove your barrel extension it's set in place. This has all your headspace and everything all set on it. So don't play with your barrel extension. Uh, <clears throat> if your barrel extension is loose, that does sometimes happen with these. Um, you can take it to somebody who has experience with these guns and have them tighten it all back up. There, this witness mark right here. If that is, if half of it's shifting from side to side, or on this particular one, if the Remington marking right there is shifting from side to side, half of it is, then your, uh, or if you can feel it, your extension is loose. And that's bad. Probably don't want to be shooting it too much. Um, this particular barrel is in the white. I don't know if they were all that way. I think they were. And you can see there was corrosion on it at one point. Somebody went through and cleaned it all up though. So that's good. Next, we're going to remove the end cap. And the end cap 
is what holds a ratchet washer, the spring, the buffer, and the spring cup. Not in that order. You can actually see in there a little bit. So, I'm going to take my tool. And I, again, I pre loosened all these. Yours is probably going to be considerably tighter. Now, when you're doing this, make sure you're holding on to it. A lot of guys will put uh, like a plastic bag over the end. Ah, it's got a bowl puller in it. Didn't know that. So, we'll take this bag. And this will catch anything that flies out the end. See, like that washer. There we go. So there's our main spring. There's the cup to the main spring. And there's the buffer. And this is... I can get it to budge a little bit, but it's pretty stout. But anyway, it sits in there like this. And then you have your ratchet, and then you have your end cap, and you have this guy at the end. This guy goes there, and that's how it's assembled. Gives you kind of a blown out view of it, lets you know exactly what's going on. That's why a lot of guys will call these uh, spring poles. Like they call a muzzle loader a smoke pole, they call this a uh, spring pole. Excuse me, I got something going on. <clears throat> wow. Um, to get it back uh, together, it's a bit tricky. You might use some colorful language. I'm going to try to refrain from doing so. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Um, obviously, I'm not going to take the rear sight off. Um, you can kind of perhaps see down there. Your rear sight is about right here. You can see a lug in there that's holding, that's threaded and holding the screws. You can also see a lug where this guy. This is the um, the lug that is threaded for your thumb screw for your fore end. It's riveted uh, to this uh, barrel jacket, and then you can kind of see down all the way down there, about not quite midway, a little further than midway. Uh, it's like a keyed ring. That is what this rests on, and then this is on top. So. Yeah, if we had to look at it on the barrel, it's probably about right there. Actually, probably a little further forward. It's probably about right in this area on the barrel jacket. So you'll see like a shelf in there that's got a key cut. So anyway, let's get this back together. First things first, we're going to drop our buffer in there. This one's oiled up and ready to go. We're going to drop the cup in there that retains our, or holds our mainspring. And it's literally a cup. There's a lip on the inside. And we're going to drop that guy into place. We're going to take our mainspring. Careful with these because the ends of these are very pointy and very sharp. Now this next bit isn't easy, nor is it fun. Um, what we can do to make it a little less hard just insert the barrel not quite all the way. Just gotta get it started. That'll kind of help guide the spring down there. So I'm just gonna put it down all the way. Okay, there we are. And I'm gonna back you guys off just a bit so I have more room to work. So forgive me. I'm going to back that out just a bit. Now, make sure with this ratcheted washer that the teeth on it are facing that way. Because that's what your, your uh, main washer, your barrel retaining nut, engages. So make sure that that's facing out that way. Don't worry about that little nubbin on the inside because this is keyed. Don't worry about that guy yet. We're not terribly worried about his alignment. Now this is the way I do it because again I have pretty strong hands. Um, this is why I don't recommend if you've never done this before do it. Take it to somebody that's got experience or use the proper tools. Woo. Yeah, see it can be a little bit of a trick. Okay so 
using my finger I was pushing the spring back past the washer and kind of holding everything together and it took some finagling that I kind of did off camera because I didn't want to waste the battery or the space on it but we have it lined up underneath that washer now so all we're going to do is push the barrel back in as best we can and using a brass tool push that spring out of the way so the barrel can get past it. And once that barrel's past that spring we're pretty good. Now we have to line up that ratchet piece. And that can be a little tricky so we're going to tighten the cap most of the way. I'm actually going to tighten that nut down the rest of the way. I've tightened the nut down the rest of the way. Okay. All right, there we go. That should help put a little bit more tension on that uh, ratchet piece in there. That's it. Well, there we go. Now we found the slot. Now it's nice and tight. So now we can start the main nut back on. This took about 20 minutes to do. I cut a lot of it, so. So once we have it on with the fingers, good portion. We're going to reinsert it back into the receiver. Line everything back up. Seat that back in. Snug that, but not super tight. And then we're going to take our tool here. I'm just going to go, it's going to start ratcheting. Don't stop. Once you start to feel a lot of tension, this is where you want to really tighten her down at. Feel that that's pretty good. Check function real quick. Put your finger on the end of the muzzle. Everything felt pretty good there. Nice and smooth. Tighten the main action screw down. This guy here to reinstall it to the action. Slot our fore end back on. nice and snug. There we go. Okay, so not my most graceful video, but anybody who's taken one of these apart without the proper tools can tell you it's not a very easy or graceful process. These are very tricky guns. You don't get a nice, smooth, uh, clean, compact, semi-automatic package like this unless there's a lot going on under the hood. So, I wish I had the tools to do it. It's just I take these guns apart so very little that I don't want to spend the money on them. Um, I don't even know where to get them, to be honest with you. I'm sure the guys in the great Model 8 will uh, be able to point you in the right direction if you do decide to get the tools. But as you can see, it's a pain. It's not easy. Don't, don't do what I do and use this thing. It's a bad idea. I've done it before, but... It was only to initially clean the rifles and get any gunk, <coughs> rust, or anything that had been uh, left in the uh, barrel jacket. So, Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, fair, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed. Uh, we'll do some shooting with these here pretty soon, and uh, I'll get some video of that up. I do have a little bit of a video of me shooting this gun up on my Instagram, so if you want to check that out, link in the description below, and uh, give it a look. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.